remember what they are desire decision determination desperation and when they are broken it up they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay you see all the men all the women that ever came to christ they arch all those qualities and as you are coming to christ tonight you need that kind of quality look at jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13 and ye shall seek me and find me here is god talking through jeremiah he said if you need forgiveness you shall seek me and find me if you need healing you shall seek me and find me if you need deliverance evil spirits are tormenting your life and you want total complete heavenly deliverance he said if you want deliverance you shall seek me and find me if you want your life to come in a normal way and to fulfill the purpose and the plan that God had made in your life but sin is disturbing you but transgression is diverting your attention from the purpose of living he said if you want a plan the divine plan to be done in your life he shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart there must be a desire there must be a decision there must be a determination there must be a desperation i want him at all costs your whole heart your whole mind your whole concentration and your whole passion comes to it when you shall search for me with all your heart when you do that tonight you'll meet christ i said tonight you'll meet christ you'll be your savior you'll be your healer he'll be your deliverer he'll be the one that takes every mountain out of your life tonight come to point number two now point number two we're looking at the faith for forgiveness and salvation through christ we're coming back to mark chapter two and i'm reading from verse five when jesus saw their faith what how do you see faith when jesus saw their faith let me ask you let me put another word for instead of that faith how do you see love it says when jesus saw their faith yes he saw faith how do you see love how do you see affection how do you see fortitude those are qualities that they're not tangible they're not physical they're not natural love how do i see love i see love by action from the action from the smile from the latter from the you know the body the body language i can see the love how do you see somebody's attitude i can see the attitude from the way they position themselves and the way they respond and the way they say here am i i come joy joy is something invisible how do i see joy by the action of joy by you know the expression of joy the same way he sees faith by the action of faith look at the man determined look at the man decisive look at the man desirous look at the man in those four corners the spirit from the desire from the decision from the determination from the desperation that is uh, exhibited and known by the one looking at them 
That's how you saw their faith. By not giving up. That's how you saw their faith. By their expectation. That's how you saw their faith. By their climbing up there. And making, removing a tile. And lowering the man there. That's how you saw their faith. Anywhere. Anytime. God the Almighty says faith. Faith in action. Faith in expression, he always does the incredible, the impossible. He always works a miracle. Now, when you have faith, that faith will be expressed. When you have love, that love will be, ex will be expressed. If you have expectation, by the way, expectation is what brings realization. If you have expectation, it will show by your action. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Look at James chapter 2. In James chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 17. So even so faith, if it has not works, even faith, if it has no expression, even faith, if it has no action, is dead being alone is dead a love a kind of love you don't give action to you don't give expression to that love is dead joy any joy that doesn't have expression action that joy is dead affection any affection you don't give any expression to you don't give any action to link up with that affection that affection is dead faith even so faith if it has not works not no action no expression no desire no determination no decision no desperation even so faith if it has not works is dead being alone look at verse 20 in verse 20 but without no O vain man <laughs> look at the inspired apostle is saying the people that have faith they say they have faith no action no expression they will not rise up and come to christ they will not express the desire to come to christ they will not take a decision a firm unshakable decision to come to christ he said O vain man they do not have determination and they do not have a mind of their own christ is savior i am coming to christ no they don't have that he says O vain man a man that doesn't understand that faith must have expression faith must have action it says well thou know O vain man that faith without works is dead faith without standing up for Christ is dead faith without calling on Christ to forgive and to set free would well, you know that that faith is dead faith without an appropriate associated action with that faith that faith without works is dead look at verse 26 in verse 26 for us the body without the spirit is dead the body still having some air on the head the body having the sign of ears the body having the mouth the body having the nose the body the legs are not cut off they are there but the body without the spirit and it's the spirit that gives action to the body it's the spirit that gives expression to the body and the body without the expression of the spirit that body is dead it says so faith so-called faith so faith without works 
without appropriate action, without appropriate expression, without coming, coming, coming until we get to Christ, the Savior and the Healer. It says so faith without works, without action, without expression is dead also. Let's come back now to uh, Mark chapter 2 verse 5. In Mark chapter 2 verse 5, it says when Jesus saw their faith. I want to tell you anywhere there is faith in Christ, there's salvation, there's forgiveness. But the faith, in, as somebody said, but I had faith and I don't feel I'm forgiven, that's dead faith. That's faith without desire. That's faith without a decision. That's faith without determination. That's faith without desperation. That's faith without the asking and the demanding for a change of life, a change of heart. Anywhere there is faith, active faith. Anywhere there is faith, decisive faith anywhere there is faith a clinching faith that clinches to the Lord and says I will not leave him he is my savior he is my healer anywhere there is active dynamic faith like that you will hear from the Lord's son that's conversion right there. That's the transformation right there. Now, you must understand, when Jesus saw sinners, he called them sinners. He said to the Pharisees, you of your father, the devil, and your children of the devil. Jesus is the truth. But because this man has now come to the presence of Christ, instead of calling him sinner, he called him son. Tonight, he'll call you son. I say tonight, he'll call you son. He'll call you daughter. Because you have that active faith, express faith coming to him. He says, thy sins be forgiven thee. Thy sins, all of them, all the sins together. You know, when people forgive, they have to forgive in isolation. You have offended 100 people. And one says, you are forgiven. I but the 99 others, they still feel offended. You go to the second one, please forgive me. And then... He forgives. That's true. Out of a hundred, I bought the ninety-eight. And then you go to the one you offended just this year. Forgive me. He forgives you. That's good. I bought the one you offended the previous year and the previous year. And since you are born, it's only Christ that can forgive all the sins you committed since you are born until this time and take the guilt away and take all the condemnation away it's only christ now if somebody forgives you here it cannot tele telephone heaven and say heaven this man here offended me i forgive him the forgiveness of man stops right here on earth the forgiveness of man does not travel to heaven, but Christ, the Savior, your substitute, the one that died for you. When he says, Son, thy sins be forgiven you, immediately there is joy before all the angels of God in heaven. That forgiveness travels to heaven. You're forgiven. Heaven knows. You're forgiven. The Father knows. You're forgiven. The Holy Ghost knows. You're forgiven. There's a book in heaven. Anytime Christ forgives a sinner and he says, I don't regard you as a sinner anymore. I regard you as a son.
I regard you as a daughter. I regard you as a child of God. And the Spirit of God bears witness in your heart to what the Father has done and what the Son has affirmed. Anytime you have that forgiveness through the Son, through the Savior, through our substitute who died for us, the Spirit bears witness on earth in your heart and the angels bear witness there in heaven. That's the value of the forgiveness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when a man forgives you, maybe you are stolen and you, and you say, I'm sorry, I stole that thing. Forgive me if he's kind enough, merciful enough to forgive you. There's something he cannot do. He cannot take the nature of the thief out of your heart. He cannot transform your life. He cannot change your life. He can forgive you. But the forgiveness is only to say that isolated action. I forgive. But the man cannot give you the power not to repeat that thing. Only Christ can forgive and set you free. That's why he said, if the Son, that's Christ, if the Son, that's Savior, if the Son, that's a Redeemer, if the Son will set you free, ye shall be free indeed. It's only Christ that can forgive and set free at the same time. Look at all the people in the Bible. Enoch, great man. He could not make members of his family go with him in the rapture. Moses, a great man. He could not make the members of his family, the closest people to him. He could not give them a change of heart, a change of life. All the people you can read about, they may have good nature, they may have, um, you know, helpful attitude, but they could not transform the lives of all the people that came across their way. Only Christ can say, your sins are forgiven and you are set free from all those sins. And tonight, he will do that for you. Give me a good amen. amen. Tonight, as you come with the desire as you come, making up your mind with decision, as you come and you are determined, no other God, no other Savior, no other controller, director of my life, I am determined he and him alone will be the guide of my life. As you are desperate, I must have the forgiveness tonight and the guilt and the condemnation tonight, they must go. And you come to him, he will tell you the same thing, thy sins be forgiven thee. Thy sins be forgiven thee. I was waiting for Lusaka. Amen. He will forgive you tonight. We're coming to number three now. Number three is the force of faith in the Savior for your kingdom. The force of faith, the power of faith as your Savior, as the one that comes and he turns your life around and he says all the burden you carry. And you know what? Since sin came in into the world, sickness also came into the world. I challenge you, if you could reach the first two chapters of Genesis, there was no sin because of that. There was no sickness. There was no sin because of that. There's no suffering. There was no sin when God created Adam and Eve. And because of that, there was no disease. There was no death even. 
But now, in chapter 3, Adam and Eve allowed sin to come into their lives. Sin. Satan in nature. Their nature became twisted. Their nature became corrupted. Satan came to tempt Eve and introduced the forbidden fruit and instead of taking God as their only commander, they took Satan as their commander. Because of that, their nature, Satan entered into their nature and Satan S-I-N Satan in nature now made them to do other things that were wrong and Job tells us can anything good come out of a sinful defiled man no and so sin came upon everyone and the soul that sinneth it shall die and death passed on on every man and the heralds of death the forerunners of death sickness sickness comes as an herald and he said the final master death is coming but a uh, sin comes ahead and those evil things demonstrate satan in your nature and eventually people struggled and tried but they could not deliver themselves except the lord himself christ the savior christ the healer christ the deliverer christ the mountain mover and when he came everywhere he went he dealt with sickness why because he's the one that can deal with sin therefore he's the one that can deal with sickness is the one that can remove satan's nature in man is the one that can remove the suffering and the sickness in man and so now it's going to demonstrate that look at mark chapter 2 reading from verse 9 whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy that sins be forgiven thee or to say arise take up thy bed and walk the lord said saving souls easy forgiving people sinners easy setting them free and giving them a change of life easy and then recreating their joints and recreating their bones and telling them rise up and walk easy tonight god will heal you and it's easy all he has to say is first of all that sins are forgiven thee that's why we we'll first of all make the altar call and we we'll say you need to be free from sin so that you have your name in the book of life in heaven and then after that we we'll say you have any sickness lay your hand there raise up the hand and we we'll mention the name of jesus and the mighty powerful name of jesus will clear up every sickness in your body in jesus name amen. lusaka amen. amen that sins be forgiven thee or to say arise take up thy bed and walk look at verse 10 in verse 10 but that she may know that the son of man has power on earth listen to the language listen to the language the son of man has power not just in israel not just in jerusalem not just in judah the son of man has power on earth on earth everywhere in every nation all those who are connected tonight he has power 
on earth to forgive sins it says to the sick of the palsy look at verse 11 in verse 11 i say unto thee the man of authority the man of anointing how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for god the father was with him that one that has authority that has power that has anointing that breaks every yoke from every life is the one that says i the man of authority the son of man the son of god and the one that has all power on earth and in heaven i say unto thee arise you didn't have to touch him his watch alone carries power his watch alone carries authority his watch alone conveys healing to the sick his watch alone conveys power authority anointing to anyone and everyone that says lord i believe you are my savior i believe you are my healer speak the word only and i will be healed arise take up thy bed you remember this man could not even walk by himself could not stand by himself could not carry his bed and some people even one man could not carry him and the bed when they needed four men and to this man christ said take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house miracle somebody help me shout miracle is coming your way tonight healing is coming to you tonight deliverance is coming to you tonight strength strength from on high power from on high healing from on high deliverance from on high coming to you tonight he said rise up take up that bed he was telling him you couldn't do that before could you know i couldn't do that now do what you could not do he looked at the four men that helped him why it not for these four men i couldn't rise up now do what you couldn't do rise up and i couldn't pick up my bed now christ you have met christ the healer and remember this is faith you must put that faith into action because i believe believe God can heal me all right put that into action I believe Jesus is my healer put that into action what if the man had said Lord I can't I couldn't look at the four men that's why they brought me here if he had said that his faith will be dead faith but he believes the Lord. And we're told, look at verse 12. In verse 12, and immediately he arose. He didn't say, 